Hello and welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras and coming up in today's newscast, a massive drug bust in the South, some 1,200 officers participating. Meantime, a shocking revelation, female Israeli soldiers and prison guards harassed in absolutely unbelievable ways. And finally, Defense Minister Benny Gantz landing landmark agreements in Morocco. To begin, the war on crime and violence in the Arab-Israeli sector ongoing in full force. Police descending upon a massive illegal operation near Beersheba in the Negev Desert. Some 1,200 officers participating in the raid, closing in on the targets from all sides, even rappelling down from helicopters. And the operation focusing on a huge criminal organization in the Bedouin community, suspected of involvement in money laundering and drugs and firearms smuggling. At least 41 suspects detained and two Carlo-style submachine guns seized, along with over 20 kilos or 45 pounds of cannabis. Additionally, police saying that a dozen greenhouses with thousands more cannabis plants decommissioned. But despite the seeming success of this and several other recent operations, Public Security Minister Omer Barlev is far from content, saying, quote, our fight to restore security to residents will be continuous and with quite a few ups and downs. And as testament to this fact, the 2021 death toll in the Arab-Israeli sector now including at least 112 suspected homicides, of which 93 victims were Arab-Israelis and 19 were Palestinians from East Jerusalem or with other Israeli residents. And this including fatal shootings in both East Jerusalem and in Haifa overnight on Wednesday. Again, though, the good news is that initiatives to address the chaos from several angles are underway. While police are addressing the criminal elements in the Arab-Israeli sector, the government, under direction of the Arab Ram Party chairman Mansour Abbas, securing budgets for a five-year economic plan. The idea being to bring Arab society up to speed with Israel's progress and thereby undercut the lifelines and strength of criminal gangs. Now, our top story tonight, investigations into the September 6th Gilboa prison break by six Palestinian convicts is still underway, but the probe revealing details far more heinous than initially expected. On top of supposed negligence making the escape possible in the first place, Gilboa prison commander Freddy Ben Shitrit now alleging systemic and routine abuses against female IDF soldiers and IPS officers. In fact, he's claiming that he took it upon himself to protect the soldiers stationed at the prison after learning that senior officers were regularly assigning female soldiers to the prison security block, despite their repeated complaints of sexual harassment from inmates. And several women are now backing Ben Shitrit's claims of being pimped to prisoners, confirming that they were used to appease terrorists' whims and threats. With me to expand on the allegations is ILTV reporter Asaf Nissan. Asaf, thanks so much for being with us. Now, first off, the IPS is blasting Ben Shitrit, actually, saying that he's just trying to divert attention away from the investigation into the Gilboa prison break. How do you respond, especially now that several women have actually come out in, in response and in support of his claims? Well, we're seeing this as a, complete, as a clear and complete sign that Ben Shitrit is not fabricating any evidence, fabricating any allegations or stories. This, in fact, happened. It doesn't matter there were a lot of issues and still are that being investigated in the, in the committee reg uh, regarding the escape. But the fact that, that these stories happen and you have people coming back and backing it up, it shows that there's much more behind the scenes that we know. And this is really disturbing. Well, and we know we, we've had some, uh, some people coming to the defense, uh, uh, an officer named Yael, former IDF officer who worked at the Gilboa prison, who, uh, who, who, whose claims go back to 2017 and there was... Uh, quite ostensibly many others. Uh, but if, so if it was Ben Shitrit's mission, as he says, to protect these women, why do you think he waited until now to expose this case? Why, why wait until an investigation into the prison to, to expose this issue? So he didn't exactly wait. According to reports, he did, it did come up in the past in 2018. But I think it was also talk about lack of enough evidence on the story, and plus they were, I think, was also an issue of, again, using... Some, using the 
well, the prisoners, well, not the prisoners, but the women jailers is kind, is some kind of informant, maybe to try not just to appease, but maybe to get a confession, to get more details and stuff from behind the scenes from, those, from the Palestinian prisoners and from the danger that does tend to systemize, that does tend to have the system cover up a little bit on the story in order for national security. But, but again, though, if, if we're talking about a situation in which a, a soldier you know, or, or prison service officer, female or otherwise, is to be used as an informant, that's, you know, that, that's consensual. That's something exactly. that, that that person is putting themselves in a, danger, in a potentially dangerous or compromising situation. But that's not what we're hearing here. What we're hearing here is true. We're hearing a lot of pretty much misuse, and of course, I would probably call it just plain awful, disgusting behavior. It's, I mean, it's an abuse. It's it is. It's exactly. It's, the it's power of use and it's finest, and it's hard to to detach these issues. Again, the reason it, it, that when that it came up in 2018 is because of that misuse of power. But I think due to the fact that they wanted to play it on a more national security angle, they covered it up and they didn't want to throw it that much up in the air. But now that the, the allegations are coming out again, and the support is coming out from those former, from those former uh, jailers, you see that there's a lot of dirt that was covered up due to that. All right, so again, how does something like this even happen? Because I know, of course, this is a situation of, of abuse of power, uh, assuming that the allegations are true. Uh, wh you know, what are the checks and the balances and the safeguards in place to prevent this type of abuse of power from happening? What is the chain of command? To whom can, can women in positions like this complain to? So the checks and balances are always there. It was always there, I think, ever since prior to the Me Too area. Uh, sorry, sorry to the prior to the Me Too period. But we've seen it for years. I mean, the IDF has always had an advisor for, 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 for female affairs, which became for gender affairs these days much. And they actually deal with any kinds of gender uh, discrimination and harassment. But, due to, but we've always seen it happening. and. Women were always, were always not, uh, let known to come forward with any problems, any complaints to the branch of the advisement, pretty, of giving them the option to complain for any problems. Now, having that issue with, with abuse of power is always tricky because, especially in the IDF, they can't complain and quit their jobs. This is a, because this is a mandatory uh, service. It's a conscript. Exactly. It's, a con, it's exactly because she's a conscript. She doesn't have that much of an option to complain that easily. Even if she complained, Prior to the well, well I mean, she can, she can. Uh, these days, it's easier. Let's be honest. She can complain. I mean, she can't quit the army, so exactly. Speak, but she can complain. She can complain, and fortunately enough, because we're post Me Too period, we're actually much more aware of it. But prior to then, those who would complain a lot of times because they they would also be suspected and then follow a play in, in the background. Maybe they weren't pleased with the commander. Maybe they had some issues with him. It's still again, it's also it's always uh, it's always watched over. But this issue of you know of abuse of power was much more common back then because it was, it was not aware of that much of the abuse and sexual harassment towards women as much as these days. All right, well, I think the officials in the Gilboa prison are going to have a lot to answer to. Obviously. Uh, this investigation obviously is still ongoing, and there's, I mean, this is early, early reports from the probe. I mean, it just happened in September, and so now we're two months in. And, and, we're we're and we're, don't forget, we're talking about the, the prison break itself. I don't know what other heinous stories can come up. Exactly. From. There's, I mean, there's obviously a lot more uh, in, in the negligence investigation. So uh, we're probably going to hear a lot more about this uh, as time goes on. I hope to have you back for those uh, conversations. Asaf, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, now, if you're enjoying ILTV, make sure to check out our full episodes and special content available on our new streaming platform, ILTV Plus. This week on ILTV Plus, an in-depth discussion on when free speech crosses into violent incitement, this week on Insider. Or take a virtual tour through the coastal city of Herzliya in central Israel. And, of course, the latest installment of our new weekly Torah portions, Vayeshev, where Joseph's story winds its way to Egypt.